Many of us are familiar with the problems that deteriorating culverts can cause. In many cases, there are warning signs that should not be ignored. This example is captured by News Channel 8 Chief Photojournalist Kevin Fowler in Freeport, Maine. Often, just as in this example, we will patch failing pavement, but leave the cause of the pavement distress, piping of the culvert joints left untreated. Such decisions can prove to be a disaster. Voids such as this are sure signs of culvert problems below. Don't treat the symptom, treat the disease. Culvert liners offer us one option for restoring deteriorating culverts. But deciding which culverts can be lined and which ones have deteriorated or deformed to the point that they need to be excavated and replaced is a more difficult question. Although the answer to that question will vary depending on the circumstances, here are a few signs to look for. At a glance, this circular culvert shows it has lost much of its favorable circular geometry. Flattened segments can buckle more easily, causing the culvert to fail completely. At this point though, this culvert can be restored with a liner. Flattening, followed by buckling and failure of the upper crown of this culvert, makes repair much more difficult and costly. Joint failures can be cured with liners. The water flowing into this culvert is evidence of piping and eroding of outside soils. This culvert can be lined. Make sure grout can be pumped into the voids surrounding the culvert as well. You might think that this photo is a lost cause. The invert is completely deteriorated and some of the soils below the culvert have eroded away. However, this culvert can still be restored with a liner. The grout that is pumped into the space between the liner and the culvert can be used to easily fill up this void as well. Left untreated, poor joints or corrosion can result in serious piping problems. If the culvert is large enough for entry, holes can be cut to allow grout to fully fill piped or eroded areas. So, we have determined that a culvert can be restored using a liner. But would it be better to line the culvert or excavate and replace it? This is a question that will be answered on a case-by-case -case basis, but here are some general guidelines to follow. It may be more cost effective to line an existing culvert when there is a high volume of traffic traveling over the culvert or an average daily traffic of a thousand vehicles or more. It may also be more cost effective to line an existing culvert when the maximum cover is greater than four feet, as this requires benching or shouldering when excavating. Remember, always practice good safety procedures when working in open trenches. You may want to consider lining an existing culvert when the detour out for the culvert area is greater than 20 minutes. When there is a live stream passing through a culvert, you will need to make sure that there are not any fish that require passage through that culvert. Culvert liners often replace corrugated metal culverts with a smoother barrel. This smoother surface allows water to move through the culvert faster. This increased speed may also limit the ability of fish to migrate through the culvert. If there are fish in the stream, have a hydraulics engineer verify that the fish passage is not an issue. So we have determined that we can and will line a culvert. What's next? Check the culvert to make sure it is clear of dirt and debris. If necessary, flush and clean the culvert no more than a few days before installation. If the existing culvert is misaligned, partially collapsed, or has faulted joints, create a nose cone by cutting the male end of the pipe into eight dovetails with a saw. Drill holes into each dovetail, about one inch from each tip. Connect a wire between opposite holes and tighten to draw the dovetails together. Insert the male end of the liner into the existing culvert at the outlet if possible. Use a backhoe or similar equipment to pull the liner into the culvert. Sometimes it is helpful to both push and pull the liner. Make sure to leave at least five feet of liner out. Use a sheet of plywood to prevent damage to the pipe when pushing in the liner. Align the male end of the next section with the female end of the first section a couple of feet apart. Make sure that the slopes of the two sections are the same. Clean both ends of the liner with a rag. Place the gasket in the first groove of the male end to make a watertight seal. Next, apply lubricant evenly to both ends of the liner. Double wrap chains approximately four feet from the ends of the liner and tighten with binders. Attach one come along on each side of the couplings, 180 degrees apart from each other. 
Make sure to use closed hooks for the come-alongs to prevent slipping. Use chain come-alongs for the best results. Use the come-alongs to apply force to both sides of the liner. Look for the female side to increase in outer diameter as the force is applied. If the chains or the come-alongs appear to be overstressed, stop the operation and check the alignment. As the liners snap together, you should hear two distinct popping sounds. Fan the grout feed tubes to the liner about 5 feet away from the joint with two adjacent 2x4s. Make sure to label the feed tubes according to their length with a permanent marker. This will help the contractor to fill the tubes with grout in the correct order. Insert the liner into the existing culvert. Repeat the previous steps until the culvert is fully lined. Seal the culvert ends with a concrete mix at least 8 inches thick or more if necessary to withstand grout pressures. And insert air tubes on the top and sides. The air tube should be at least 18 inches long. Grout the annular space as soon as possible after the bulkhead is set up. Apply special end treatments to the inlet and outlet if provided. If you need help or want an opinion, please contact your region hydraulics engineer or central hydraulics. They are there to help with any drainage related problems you may have.